In this video, we're going to learn more about assemblies in Fusion 360. Hey everyone, thanks for tuning back in. And at this point, we've gone a couple lessons in. In this case, we're in our third video where we're building out this linkage assembly. Now we've already had several other videos where we looked at the basics of sketching and part modeling and freeform modeling and assemblies and now we're really starting to apply those and learn some more of the nuances that we need to understand in Fusion 360. At this point in our design what I want to focus on is how we copy components. Anytime you're creating a design whether it's a mechanical assembly or something that's static most likely you're going to have some components in that design that are copies. Now there are a couple different ways that we can do this. We can do this inside of the base link itself and we can copy the body in there by mirroring which will put multiple bodies inside of this component. So let's take a quick look at what that would be and then we can move on and we can take a look at other ways in which we can copy these components and try to understand some of the pros and cons. So in the base link, I'm going to activate it. And then I'm going to take a look at mirroring this body. So if we take a look at the create dropdown, we have mirror option. And the pattern types we have are faces, bodies, features, and components. And we're going to be focusing on bodies because we're inside of our design. We're going to select the body. And then we need to figure out what the mirror plane is going to be. Now at this point in time, we don't have a mirror plane that makes sense for this design. So depending on the design intent, and again, there are many different ways in which we can look at this, many different ways in which we can think about it, but depending on your design intent, you might want to create a plane inside of this component, or you might want to use something you already have as a reference. So for example, if I expand the origin of my dog link, and I take a look at the XZ plane, I can use that even though it's in its entirely own component, even though it has nothing to do with my base link other than having a joint applied, I can use that plane as a reference. The reason that this is beneficial is because any changes that we make to the dog link, for example if we make the extrude a bit thicker, it's going to update those bodies. So let's see how that would look. If we activate the dog link and we take a look at the second extrude. I'm going to right click and edit the feature and instead of 0.5 inches let's say that we want it to be 0.625 so it's a little bit thicker. Well when we created our revolute joint and we aligned the base link with the dog link that automatically puts the plane directly in the middle of the link because we use that symmetry option when we were creating the extrude. So this means that when we mirror the body inside of our base link it puts it at the right location. Some of you guys out there are probably looking at this and saying there's no gap between these parts. There's no um, space for something like a thrust washer. Well, we're looking at a very basic idealized version of a design. There are a lot of details that have to go into creating something like this from press fit tolerances for bearings or bushings, figuring out how much space or interference there can be. We're not looking at any of that. We're not looking at the engineering or design aspect of it, just the application of the tools. So as we're looking at this, again, using the references that we have and understanding the implications is going to be important. We want this link to be on the other side, so this makes sense. So then we have to think about why we would do this. What is the reason why we would mirror the body inside of this component? Well, if this design required us to weld these two together, if there was some sort of feature between them and we had to weld them together as a single part, that would make sense to have both bodies directly in the same component. If this is a case, however, where we're manufacturing two of these parts identical and we simply need to have two versions in two different locations, this is not going to be the best option for us. So what that means is I'm going to go back and I'm going to delete that mirror. I'm going to leave the adjustment to this link here. I'm going to go back to the top level and activate that top level component and try to think about this a different way. So right now we have our base link. This base link is a component we created and 
let's just say that we want to make two of them that are completely identical. There's no change. There's no difference. I just want to have a second iteration in the design. Well, if I right click on it, I have copy. So I'm going to select copy. I'm going to left click at the top level. I'm going to right click again, and I'm going to select paste. Now notice there's also a paste new option, and we'll talk about that in just a minute. But in this case, we're going to select paste. When we do this, it's going to bring up the move copy dialog. This is going to allow us to move this design element around. And because we're using nice round numbers, we can simply put in a value if we wish, or we can use some of the move type options such as point to point. We can determine that we want to move it from this point to this point, and we can have them aligned in that manner, or we can simply just put it in some location in this design and we can say okay. Now the reason that we might want to do that is because we might want to come back and add a revolute joint between the two so that they move. But again we have to think about this. Do they want to move independently? How do we want to replicate that motion? And these are all design decisions that you need to make at different steps along the process. And every design is going to have its unique challenges. In this case what I would likely do is I would go to modify and align and I would align these components based on their position. So I'm going to put those two together and I'm going to capture its position. So capturing its position is going to record its coordinate systems location relative to the top level of our design. That doesn't mean that there's a joint here. I can still move it around. That doesn't mean that if I rotate things around they're all going to move together. It only means that it's bound to its current location by capturing that position. I do want to make a cautionary note here. That is not always the best way to go about things. There are certainly instances where um, you don't want to go around capturing positions because it's going to cause problems when you begin to add joints to designs. So realistically, positioning, positioning it properly when you use that move copy dialog box is going to be the best way. I simply wanted to show you the align tool because that doesn't always work out cleanly to position based on those move components. From here, the next thing that we want to do is we want to tell the software that this component, base link 1, and this component, base link 2, these are going to be rigid. We don't want them to move at all. We want them to be in the same position relative to each other. We've already applied a revolute joint. Now we want to tell them that they're fixed. And there are two ways that we can do that. We can use an as-built rigid joint, or we can create a rigid group. Both will work perfectly fine. Rigid group allows you to select more than two components, while joint or as-built joint only allows you to select two. So for as-built, I'm going to select the type as rigid and simply select both these bodies and say OK. Now if I move one, they both move together. If I come in and I ground the base link, this one is not going to move either, but this one is still free to move about based on that revolute joint. I'm going to revert the position, again go back and delete that ground. I, I don't want to artificially ground things unless I have to. But that is one method in which we now have base link 2 and base link 1. Now when we look at these names in the browser, the 1 and the 2 after the colon represent two identical instances. But let's say that we had a situation where we want to copy it just like we did, but we might want to make some changes. In this case, if we activate one of these and make any changes or adjustments, it's going to change both of them. So in the base link, for example, if we make a sketch and let's say that we want to just create a relief in the middle of this thing. Um, I'm not going to save this. I'm just going to draw a circle and I'm going to extrude this. I'm going to pull it down through using E on the keyboard and it makes a hole in both of them. So you can see there that making changes to one of the designs makes changes to all of them. Again, pros and cons. You need to decide in your design what works best. I'm going to select these in the timeline, delete them because I don't need them. And let's talk about the last way to copy a design element. This time I'm going to select the base link. I'm going to right click again and do copy. And Control C or Command C also works. I'm going to select the top level and right click and select paste new. When we do paste new, 
we have this other component in the design. I'm going to capture its position. I'm going to say OK. And I want to notice two things here. The copy of this is a different color. We're using that component color cycling, which gives a new color to each different component. So when we have the component color cycling showing us that this is a different color, that means it's its own unique component. The other thing I want to note is in the browser, the base link, which saves the same name, has a set of brackets and a one around it, and then a colon and a one. This is telling us that it's a copy or a new instance of this, which means that if we make changes to this design, for example, if we activate it, we do the same thing and we create a sketch up top, we add a circle, maybe make a relief cut, so if we remove material or add material here, it's only changing this new instance, this copy instance. So again, pros and cons. Your design needs to have a valid reason why you would want to do this. You need to figure out if you want an exact copy. When this shows up on a detailed drawing in a bill of materials, do you want to say base link quantity 2? Or do they need to be their own unique parts? Are they getting manufactured in a different way? Maybe one of them has an additional mounting point for some sort of electronic, or maybe the bearing is different on one side, or there's an extra relief cut that has to happen. So these are all different reasons why you would make that decision. For us, I'm going to go back. I'm going to delete all of this stuff. I'm going to delete this new component. And I'm using delete because it's going to take away all of those additional references. Because in this instance, I want an exact copy of that base link. I want it to say base link on a bill of materials with quantity 2. And I want them to be identical. I don't want a separate new component that I have to deal with and make adjustments to. I want them to stay the same. So at this point, we now have the base link on both sides. And we have this dog link. We have the basis for a design. Now ultimately this design, this linkage, would need to mount to some additional pieces, but really what we're focusing on is the creation of an assembly, a very basic assembly at this point, but the creation of an assembly. And we want to look at some validation tools. We want to figure out how we can come in and we can analyze this design to see if it makes sense, see if it's strong enough, weak enough, maybe make some adjustments with things like shape optimization or topology optimization. And then we want to ultimately get into the manufacturer workspace and create some basic toolpaths to cut these parts. But from here, I'm happy with where the design is. I'm going to make sure that I save this, say OK, and then we can pick up more of the detailing work in the next video.